What is your biggest fear about the future? Hi, I'm Fiona. I'm 22 years old and I'm an exchange student here at Queen's University. Uh, where I study liberal arts and sciences um, and film studies. And for this documentary, we really wanted to make a documentary on climate anxiety uh, because we believe that it's a topic that uh, isn't discussed enough, but it's a very current issue. Hi, my name is Duncan. I'm a fourth year film student here at Queen's. And for this project, we really wanted to focus on not just climate change as a whole. There's so much media uh, and, and films and, you know, content that just surround climate activism and what people can do to help the environment and we wanted to sort of break that down and focus on climate anxiety as a result of climate change and more specifically how it uh, affects the student body here at Queens. And what we wanted to do is create a space for people to realize that they're not alone um, in experiencing climate anxiety um, and to know that it's okay to talk about it and that it's important to talk about it um, because as much as we need to uh, take climate action and fight against climate change, we also need to realize the toll that this takes on everyone around the world, but especially the youth who are carrying the weight of having to deal with this for um, a long time to come. Um, and because of that, uh, we want to make sure that people remember to, while they're taking care of the planet and um, our ecosystems and are fighting so hard against climate change, uh, you shouldn't forget to also take care of yourself and the people around you um, and acknowledge uh, the mental impact that climate change uh, can and does have on uh, people all around the world. Um, what I think of when I think of climate anxiety, I think of people who get very anxious about climate change and also people who want to do something about it, I think. Like, you can look at it at two different ways, people who act and people who don't act, and I think people who feel anxious often it's kind of related to acting upon it. Uh, it's not really a term I'm familiar with. I googled it before this interview, it was the first time I looked it up. Uh, so prior to that, I probably couldn't give you a definition other than wordplay, uh, but from what I, what I gathered uh, looking it up prior to this was that it, it evolves with uh, people having like negative mental health uh, results due to climate change. Um, I think it's mainly just anxiety about the future because climate change now really is do or die. <laughs> For me personally, and the way I associate it is a lot of burnout and not making that burnout turn into like apathy and directing that energy into more wholesome conversations where we can all unite instead of like polarizing it all again. Avaz, a nonprofit organization, conducted a research among 10,000 young people around the world, aged 16 to 25, and the results of this research were quite shocking. It showed that 45% of young people feel like climate anxiety is influencing their daily life. 75% of youth fear the future. 58% believe that governments are betraying their own and future generations. And 39% is in doubt of whether they want to have children of their own in the future because of climate anxiety. So my feelings of climate anxiety come out as these feelings of disbelief and of feeling stuck. The facts are out there, the world is changing really, really quickly, and there is so much that we have to do in order to be able to save anything and everything that we can. And unfortunately, it has the, the, the symptoms are pretty negative because we just don't feel good. Um, we, feel, we, we feel anxious, but that doesn't really narrow it down. We feel, well, we feel the, we feel the displeasure of having to, having to come to terms with the fact that, uh, that, there, that there are cycles that we, have been, that we have been used to for thousands of years that are ending. Yeah, 
yeah, I do a lot, like, especially because I have classes oriented around um, the environment and climate crisis as well. I feel like so, I don't know, like I cannot do anything and I'm learning so much stuff about like yeah, climate change and policy making that are that is just like inefficient and like how just much more animals disappear every day and I'm just like, okay, but I cannot do anything. Oh my God, all the time. <laughs> um, I was just telling Duncan, I can't watch the Seaspiracy documentary because I know I'm just going to get too upset and like be in a slump for three days while, like thinking about this stuff, right? Um, I experienced a lot of it, especially through majoring in environmental science. You just like you're just constantly bombarded with depressing stuff about how fucked up our world is, right? And how you as one person, like as much as you want to change stuff, like like it's very, very difficult to, right? Uh, no. So it, it's hard for me to kind of resonate with climate change because in my in my reality uh, I don't I don't see the effects of it but the data is very clear uh, that there is rapid changes that are going in the wrong direction absolutely <laughs> on a daily basis sometimes like it takes my whole day away and I, it doesn't feel useful to study it doesn't feel useful to do anything and uh, Sometimes it presents itself as getting really angry at people for when I see them not recycling properly or um, leaving their cars to idle or whatever it is, but I quickly kind of snap out of that and I'm a firm believer in the fact that there's an illusion within society that the onus is on the individual when really it's on the bigger systems and corporations that are doing all the damage. I don't experience a lot of climate anxiety. Um, sometimes if people are talking about like what is about to happen and how quickly, a very specific thing like, oh, we're going to run out of food or, oh, we're going to have flooding here. But in general, I don't experience it a lot. It's only when very specific topics um, about what's happening come up and I don't know what the plan or the solution is. Yes, all the time. The anxiety is, it comes and it goes, because we live in a world that tries to make us, makes it, tries to make us feel good all the time. And that tries to tell us that we have to feel good all the time. And if we don't, then there's a problem with us. So we have to go to the doctor and figure it all out, as if that was possible. Um, the future is very uncertain, I would say. I tend to not, I think something that climate anxiety has done to me is I, I tend to not look like too far into the future because I really don't know. Mm, terrified, honestly terrified. Um, anxious, <laughs> that's the first word. Um, my biggest fear is that I want children someday. Sometimes I'm very optimistic, you see something good, but most of the time you're like, we have no idea what we're in against. As much as humans want to change and, and be better, uh, stewards to the world, uh, no matter what we do, we're still fucked. Um, and that's like, it sounds like a dystopia, but like it's a very real plausible event that can happen, right? Like it's hard to just like stop a factory from emitting as much carbon, right? Like people need to eat, people need to feed their families. How do you appropriately do this in time? It's the fact that, you know, we, we might not be able to, to find an appropriate method of, you know, reducing our carbon emissions and killing everybody. <laughs> I think also the, the shock and the regret that I think is gonna hit the world. Um, and then all of the repercussions that that is then gonna have. Um, yeah, I still try to remain optimistic, but a big part of me is kind of giving up to some extent.
I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident in like our, our capacity to be innovative, uh, to solve problems as a collective. I think when it comes down to it, we'll, we'll come out on top together. So I, I, don't really, I don't really have any fears for the, for the future. I feel hopeful. I think that the future could be bright. I think that there's a lot more people mobilizing now than there have been. I think that there's more and more people excited about working on climate action. I think that there's more people lobbying, there's more people protesting, there's more people contacting their MPs, and this momentum feels good. It's great to be a part of it. It's great to talk to people, see that people are passionate, and just by talking about it and being involved in the climate community, and um, even if that's just having a dinner party with some people and talking about uh, what we can all do. Um, I think that we're heading in a good direction. Oh yeah, I'm very hopeful. Yes. Yeah. Ooh. Yes. Yes, I am. I'm hopeful uh, about the future. There is a lot more people interested than you expect to, particularly younger generations. Older generations are acknowledging, uh, sorry, acknowledging it as well. Um, yeah, so I think that we can come together um, internationally too uh, to improve things. I would love to, but I don't. And but I think it's some some moments like some moments you're like really like okay we can make a change some stuff could happen but sometimes you're just like no it's too late and you just you can try to do your best at your own scale um, but that's it like nothing you cannot save the world it's too late I don't I, I don't believe in, in in there being a too late I think it's never too late to, to try to make the best of the a bad situation. I grew up being taught that it was good to believe in people and I think that on my own I, I have also discovered that it's, it's always better to believe in people than it is to, than it is to, to, to deny the possibilities. Um, I am just because again once you see what potential answers there could be um, it makes things feel a lot better you're like because often with climate change people are like this is so bad how on earth can we possibly get through this like how can we stop burning fossil fuels how can we make everyone in the world do this thing um, and, and it's just so much I don't know but when when you do see what potential solutions are right there what thing what, what people are pushing to make happen it's like oh there's a path so I do feel hopeful for it um, whether you know I think that change will happen or the stuff that's going through will, will work, I don't know. And I don't want to think about that because I, I don't need to think about that. All I have to do is think about right now, the work that I'm doing right now and trying to make it happen. There's a lot of hope to be had um, because it is very exciting, the idea of like a green economy and everything renew renewables and all of that. It's, and even like things like the Green New Deal have proven that it, it would work. Um, so things like that are very exciting and I just hope that we can implement those things on time to be able to have a future. Well, what helps me is that I actively try to be involved. So I study it, I make sure that my job, like I would never work at Shell or any bad company like actually make sure that I do something which is going to be sustainable in the long run so that's what I would tell people I think. I think a lot of it is reminding yourself why you entered the space in the first place um, whether that be the people you care about or the environment itself the things in nature and the stuff we depend on um, just revisiting that. So immersing myself in any green space that I can is always the best solution um, and if I can't be in nature then closing my eyes and picturing nature. It's important for people to realize that that oh, you're, you're, you're really not alone. 
Meeting with groups of people who also feel the same, talking about it to loved ones is, is absolutely necessary. It, that's what got me to get, get out of it. One of my favorite things that I've read is activism can't be sustained without joy. And so if you don't take care of yourself and what you need, you can't be part of the activism because you just won't be present in the effort. Like you won't be able to deal with it because it'd be too much. So definitely have to just take care of yourself. <laughs> um, talk to anyone and everyone. Talk to your friends, your parents, the mailman, your dog. Um, and just start to get educated, get involved, start listening to the news, listen to podcasts, pick up a book. Um, I think that's a really great way to feel like you're part of the movement rather than just witnessing a collapse. I think that's how I coped with it and I hope that it'll work for you too. I think it's not only you know, therapeutic but also really important to be out in nature, you know, whether that's you know, an hour a day or, or whatever, just to remember why we're fighting for climate change in the first place. I think that's the danger of climate anxiety is that um, you get so stressed out about the issues that we have to deal with because they are massive issues that um, it ends up paralyzing people to such an extent that they don't know what to do anymore. Talk to people around you about what your fears are, be open about it, but also look at the positives and what is being done and what you can do um, today and tomorrow.